in case you're watching this um, like sometime in the future and you're not watching this through my uh, Instagram page, you might not know who I am. Uh, I'm Maria Stolger. I'm coming to you from Sydney, Australia. And I have a podcast and a YouTube channel called Talking With Painters, where I interview Australian painters about their lives and art. Uh, and um, one of my guests in the past has been Wendy Sharp, who I've interviewed twice actually for the podcast. You'll find two episodes there. Uh, and um, I think there's two videos as well. And as you can see, this is what we're gonna talk about today. Wendy has almost completed a large scale mural um, at the Sydney Jewish Museum. And this is what's come up on your screen. Um, it's over 40 meters long, so it is really large, and it's called Vuis dos Gesele, which is the title of a Yiddish folk song, which means, where is the little street? Um, and Wendy's grandmother used to sing it in Yiddish and Russian. And although Wendy actually never knew her grandmother, she did go uh, to the Ukraine on a trip with her cousin, Ruth Fishman, and they to, to sort of find out more about their family history. And a lot of these, uh, what has come up in this mural has arisen out of that trip. But I'll get Wendy to tell you more about that. Um, now she's almost finished it and the exhibition will run until the 29th of August. But as everybody in Australia who is watching this knows, we are in extreme lockdown and um, we are, we've just all got our fingers crossed that, you know, that the museum will open before the 29th of August so that we can go and see it in the flesh. I really, really want to get there and see it. Um, you can have a look at it here. I'm going to just show you some more photos of parts of the mural here. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful, absolutely wonderful work. Wendy's one of our leading artists, as you would know. She's won the Archibald, she's won the Salman, she's been an official war artist. Uh, she's had nearly 70 solo shows, and she's also a great supporter of the arts, a great supporter of women in the arts, and also other social causes like uh, the plight of refugees in Australia. Um, so, I would, what, I'm going to be asking Wendy some questions, but I would love it if you could also join in and ask questions as well. You will see down the bottom of your screen, there is a question mark um, next to the comment box. If you press on that, you can, um, you can type in a question and I will try and check that every now and again to see if anybody's asked a question and so I, we can pass that on to Wendy. Um, and also wait until the end because I will be um, posting a, a um, video that Wendy's provided me of uh, a sing the singer Faye Sussman singing the song, the folk song, Vuis Dos Gesele, which is absolutely beautiful. So you gotta hang around for that. All right, so I'm just going to um, stop sharing that. So there I am, I'm back again. Thank you for joining everybody. Now I'm gonna bring on uh, Wendy. Now, Wendy's joining us from her Sydney studio uh, because of the lockdown restrictions, she couldn't go into the museum. So we're going to, you get a glimpse of her studio if you haven't seen it before. Here she is. Wait to talk about it. I'm on. Hey, bingo. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Wendy. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Congratulations on this work. It's, you know, I'm really hoping to see it in, in real life. But can I start by asking you, can you tell me a bit about the origins of it? Because it sounds fascinating. Yes, uh, and I try and talk, try and tell you it without going on and on and on because it goes back a long way. But um, a few years ago, I started looking into more of my family history and I was particularly interested in uh, my grandmother and my great aunt, who were psychic, um, originally Jewish and originally from Russia, well, now the Ukraine, via London, um, which is where my, my parents are both English. Um, I was interested in that. And then I was thinking, I could well, actually find say, out. Did you say psychic? Psychic. I say psychic. I'm talking ghosts oh, okay. and messages from the oh, other side. Okay. And, and actually, my apparently, my great aunt Anne 
was a famous psychic, really famous. Yeah. Um, so th they were really that. Anyway, um, yeah, right. I was interested in that and I was making work about that. But then I thought maybe I could actually go to where this particular part of my family came from. And so, as you just said, Maria, I went with my cousin, Ruth, who's um, from L in London, and we went to the Ukraine and we went to all these places which were kind of like, well, it was kind of like time travel where you're trying to find places which in some ways no longer exist. I mean, certainly the world that they inhabited is no longer exist, but also in some cases, all that kind of, the, 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 the existence of the Jewish people that lived there has been wiped. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think I read somewhere that like the synagogue that existed back then is now like a, hospitality place or something is that right that's right that's right that's right there's a we saw in one of the places we went there was what obviously was a synagogue which is um now a, a cinema you know and there's not yeah, there's right. no sign there is, there is there's very few memorials and there's not much about it i mean it's a it's my on that side of my family which is my father's my mother's side my mother was from yorkshire not jewish but my father's side um jewish in fact my father's my biological grandfather my real grandfather his name was ben cohen so if he yeah, hadn't right. died at the age of 28 i'd be called wendy cohen which is <laughs> it's like almost like the cohen thing is almost ben cohen is like a joke jewish name that's so oh, so okay, jewish right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he died at 28 and um my grandmother bessie who's who you were talking about who i did never met as you said um, used to sing that song. I read this in some document that a relative had written, which was amazing. That was like a gift across time to know mm. that she sang this song, which I could look up. In fact, I, I will give you, you can, besides the little piece you're going to play, I'll also let you know what link if you want to listen to it on YouTube, because it's very beautiful. But anyway, um, yeah, I when had Ben to died. To that. It's amazing, yeah. Oh, it's so it's beautiful. beautiful. When, ben died, when Ben died, he left. Bessie, with two little sons, one being my, my uh, father, Alan, who was a historian, but he was at that time, he was about four or five. And, um, and she married Dave Shapovich, who anglicised his name to Sharp. So I'm yeah, not right. related to any Shap Shapoviches or any Sharps on that <laughs> side. I'm related to her name, which is Fishman's and Cohen's on that side. Oh, so that's okay, kind of right. the thing. But yeah. um, so we, it was an amazing mean, trip with my cousin. Yeah, go on. So that means that when you got so in, when you got to um, Kamyanets Podolsky, which I think is the place in the Ukraine, there were no, there yeah. was no uh, record of any of their existence, the family's existence there at all. Look, it's terribly. It was terribly hard. We had, we were lucky to have got a really fantastic. Um, uh, this Jewish travel agency uh, organization who actually facilitate that and help. And they went back through old archives and they found really old ledgers and things which they could translate and gave us. So we could trace a lot of things that we wouldn't possibly have been able to do. But in a place like that, there are some memorials, but a lot of these areas around there, and where we're talking about is um, Southwest Ukraine, um, were the most horrific massacres. This place that you just mentioned, Kamenets Podolsky, that is a. When you look it up, like you Google it, mm. you get two things. One is an amazing fortress, and you find out it's actually a tourist attraction. In fact, Lonely Planet says it's number six on tourist attractions in the Ukraine. But the other thing that comes up is, a, I know that's what's like. Who would be? I thought, God, who's going to have heard of this? I was shocked. But then the other thing that comes up, which is just horrific, is that during the Second World War, uh, there was a massacre of Jewish people, and they killed. This is hard to believe. In 1941. 23,000 people in three days. It's, mm. it's, it, it's beyond horrific. Unbelievable. Um, mm. It's unbelievable. But my family had, of course, got out by then or I wouldn't be here, and they were getting out around 1900. Mm -hmm. So, well, so with the mural, how do you, I mean, is, it, is, it, is there a narrative to that mural or is it, what, how do you approach something like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's as as you could see from that, it is it's it's huge. It's um, so you when you go in and geez, I hope we can go in. Um, mm. it is 
a massive room and it's a it's an enclosed room which is great so you can sit in the middle of it and you are surrounded by it it's actually a journey so it you you it does actually go it's a continuous kind of scroll like narrative where you have images with my grandmother with a graveyard in london where a lot of these people are buried um a family photograph which i'm going to show you yeah there you are that is um that is a photograph of my fa my family and the little girl there mm -hmm. is um my grandmother that's her so oh, okay. so it, it has, right. I, I do actually have that copied in it and then I have the journey that Ruth and I did to the Ukraine and I include some of the places that we we went to which would be recognizable to anyone who knows that area mm. but I also try and put some what I would call poetic images of how I felt about it which um I don't want it to be an illustrative travel log but I I still want it to be about a specific thing but it's about looking for somewhere as I said that that no longer really exists which relates to the song yeah right and th well that's interesting because i think that fortress that you were talking about that castle that was on the list of tourist attractions yeah. that features that features in there doesn't it it does yeah because it's it's as a, you know like if you if anyone has ever been anywhere like that everyone recognizes that it's a it's a it's extra it's an extraordinarily dramatic place too uh kevin it's has um these kind of chasms and little, I don't know what you call them, like Mesa-like butte things that come out. It's on little hills surrounded by mm. valleys and chasms. Dramatic landscape. And of course, the places where you'd want to build fortresses and things, um, you know, to protect yourself. To protect it, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I think there's a lot, like one of the striking things as you walk in on the left, I think if people noticed it when they were watching the video, is a huge portrait. Uh, can you tell yes. me a bit about that? Yes, that is a portrait of my grandmother, Bessie, and it's a straightforward portrait. I've just got to do a little tiny bit more to it, but it's going to look pretty much like that. Um, mm. I, I had, I, she died in the 1950s when she was only in her 50s in London before I was born, so I never met her. Um, and while I was drawing her, I really did find that quite emotional because my father was very close to her. And, um, mm. you know, it's so surreal to be... My, 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 both my parents are dead when I wish my father could know I was doing this, but yeah. it's so surreal to be drawing this picture of her. It's partly about her because of her and the song. And um, to know in that some woman who's older than she ever was, who is her granddaughter, is doing a picture of her on the walls of a place in, in, in Sydney. How weird it all is but yeah, it, it was exactly. was quite emotional drawing that. i know it's a, it was quite emotional to to um to draw that and that's a charcoal drawing but the rest of it is um pretty much acrylic oh okay right yeah well it's a bit like it reminds me a little bit of of your sort of theme that comes through your work of the real and the unreal in a way isn't it because it i mean it is real obviously but it's it, it's sort of it's a memory it's something that you've never experienced it's something you have to that's imagine right. as well. So that's it's right. That's very right. much along that's right. your, your sort of work. It is. And I was trying to, um, I was try I was also trying, because I wanted, I wanted it to be emotional. I wanted it to be powerful, but I didn't want it to be too obvious. Um, I was fighting things that I thought might be a bit kitsch or might be a bit heavy handed and trying to think of images that, that didn't do that. You know, for example, I found it hard to work out at the beginning what starts it, what ends it. And, and I did have a memorial, an actual memorial um, in the mural because there was a, there was a, we did see a couple of memorials, but then I realized that, no, I've got, I've got a figure of someone with their hands over their face like this. And I thought, well, no, that's, more powerful than just a, a sort of a monolith with a some writing underneath it's kind of yeah. how do you tell the story how do you get across a feeling without you know kind of being corny if you like yeah i agree no it's very difficult and there's also that sort of balance of more of a sketched sort of feeling versus a completed painting feeling you know but i, I get the feeling that with that you need a bit of a contrast for a huge mural like that to work Absolutely, Maria. That was one of the things that I was I was very conscious of, and 
I I spent, and I don't, unfortunately, all the sketches that I have uh, at the museum, um, mm. I, I did masses and masses of sketches for it. Little scribbly ones trying to work out what images I wanted in it, what order they were in, et cetera, how big they were, et cetera. I knew that I would change it a bit as I when it was actually in there, but I needed to have. I say if it's like I kind of it's like music, you know, you need to yeah. know what you're going to improvise so that you can improvise. Um, yeah, yeah. But I was very much aware of what you just said, which is I wanted to try and get virtually every type of drawing, painting, language in it. So there's a reasonably realistic charcoal drawing of my grandmother we just talked about. There is mm. some very pale line drawing-y type things which look a bit like watercolour. There's quite a dense, full-on painting. It needs to have, I felt like it needed to have that space. And uh, some of the bits that I'm most proud of, of with it is where I can contrast something like a child's drawing of an upside down burning house in bright color with a line drawing, a big area of line drawing. You know, mm. if you can get these yes. disparate elements to work together, it's good. But it that was that was exciting and, and difficult, which of course is if it's you know if it's a challenge, that's what makes you want to do it. Yeah. Well also I noticed um you were doing those sort of stencil, using a roller, like with a stencil yeah. to cook, to make that wallpaper-ish effect, which I thought was fantastic. Yes. Like a huge area of I'm having that in the background. I'm looking around to see if there's anything like that in the studio at the moment. No, there's not. It's all over there. But yes, there's a, there's a section behind um, the drawing of my grandmother um, where I do, I've got, it's a wallpaper roller um, from, you know, eBay or something and it's just and I'm rolling I'm actually like a like the sort of roll roll paint roller but it's got raised pattern on it and I'm rolling yeah. a color across it to get something that it does look like old wallpaper that's been torn off um, mm. and and I'm contrasting that with the charcoal drawing and and uh, and something else so you know I'm I'm pleased with how all that has connected together but you know mm. I'm I'm just I'm just hoping that it doesn't just exist online because oh I that's know the I know we'll have to well, you know if it does end up opening we're just gonna have to you know have these tours although I'm sure probably only be two people in there allowed at a time but anyway uh, now we've got a few we questions um Wendy I'm gonna have a look and see what questions have come up sure um okay uh let me see Okay, so Sarah Bell is saying, will the mural be documented for us to see? Uh, yes, Sarah, yes, it will be. So I, what I have been able to do, which I can't now because we're now in severe lockdown, is have photographers um, coming in to document it. But also um, there is a, a filmmaker called Joshua Marks who's been filming all the time so he's been there so there will be right. we'll make sure we have that um what they the the museum uh, is allowing me to to go back in there when i'm when there's nobody else in the whole museum but me to mm. finish it which i will which i really want to do because i'm so close to being finished but you know no really no and it i can i can be in there if there's just me in this huge space but um he, he can't be in there filming me because they just can't have anyone else. It's, you know, it's a, the rules are very unclear, by the way, for those of you who aren't from New South Wales. But, you know, like we don't quite, but we're, we're obviously we're trying to do the right thing. Um, yes. But, yeah. you know, there's been so much documentation that I think even if we miss this last little touch, that'll be okay. And then we want it documented when it's totally complete so that everyone can see it. Yeah. I think that every, a lot of people want to see it. Um, okay. Now, Judy is saying, where in the Ukraine did you did your family live? My family was from Minsk. Okay. Um, in Kamenets Podolsky, which is down in the southwest, and also in a place which is called either Yampil or Yampol, I see it written, which is a little port town um, on the Dionesta River. And uh, we got as far as the river and this little town and um, we've traced them also to Moldova, which is where I really want to go because that, that sounds like such a fascinating place. The Dionessa yeah. River is 
where we were standing is a very narrow river. So you could see quite easily how this is another country on the other side, how easily it would be to be swapping back and forth. Yeah, right. Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? Okay. It is. Now, it's I'm fascinating. Gonna, yeah. Now, Carly, Carly Lissif is saying, is this on paper? Well, I mean, she, she probably realised, she probably sent the, the, the um, question in earlier, but yeah, it's a mural. So it's, a, so it's basically no, it's like a... Directly. It's a yeah. It's a huge, it's pretty huge room, isn't it? It is big. So it's, it's at least yeah. um, 40 square, you know, at least 40. The, the wall I'm painting on is more than 40 metres along. So it's, yes, um, right. yeah, it's, it's, it's a large room. And I am painting directly on the walls. And I am using a mixture of artist acrylic paint, really good acrylic paint, um, house paint, and student quality paint, and charcoal. Um, if I was doing it as a thing that was meant to last forever, I wouldn't use all of that stuff together. But, you know, that'll last. I mean, it's obviously going to last yeah. for a couple of months, but it would probably still last for a few years. But that's what I've been using. Yeah, right. And when you're, you know, you're no stranger to the mural, Wendy. I mean, you did that new mural in Newtown. You did the Mossman Gallery, and I'm sure you've done other ones. But how do you... Um, you know, what are the challenges for that, for a mural as opposed to doing a painting on a canvas? Mm, mm. One of the biggest cha challenges, obviously it's complicated in this case, I wanted to design it, of course, you know, and I have to kind of know what I'm doing more than if I'm doing, let's say, you know, there's unfinished paintings behind me there um, yeah, that I'm yeah. still working on. But if I'm working on that kind of scale, which is still some of them are a reasonable scale, you know, as you're down that end, going down that end, mm. some of those are a reasonable scale, but it's easier to, to change them. Whereas on that scale, you need to have, you don't, you know, you can't really change it in that same way. Um, and mm. I'm also working on a tighter schedule. Whereas these, some of these paintings that are around me right now have been around for months and months. And I, do a little touch here, a little touch there. But the biggest challenge is the scale. So what happens is, I'm, I, let's say we're drawing a tall a, a figure, a large, large life-size figure or bigger. Draw the head, looks fine. Knee, crouch down, draw the feet, looks fine. Walk away, out of proportion. So it's constantly, constantly yeah. walking away and seeing how... Um, the whole thing that that part works in proportion, but also how does that part work with the rest of the mural? Not it's not on its own; it's part of a whole. Um, yeah. 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 And as we were saying, it might be something quite different to the rest of it, but it needs to still make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Roslyn is saying, um, "What happens at the end of the exhibition?" That's what I was going to ask you actually, because there's no possibility they're going to extend it, is there? Well, I think there's very little. I mean, what was supposed to have happened? I, you know, I've been Rosalind Sugarman is the the name of the um, curator, and you know, I contacted her with this idea. She reckons a couple of years ago, so it probably was. It was before I went to um, the Ukraine, so it's ages. No, it's ages ago. Anyway, we it was going to happen last year, and then we thought moved it along and whatever to this time, which looked good until this happened. Um, yeah. If lockdown hadn't happened, it would have been I would have been painting it for about a week. Uh, public could have even come and watched me during some organised bits during that, and then it would have been open for I don't know two months or seven weeks or something before it was wiped out and gone. Um, but Due to lockdown, we don't know. However, what, what's happened is that the Sydney Jewish Museum has scheduled um, renovation and major work to that exhibition space, which is supposed to be happening at the very beginning of September. So, you know, that's scheduled with the building company to be demolished, that room. Um, yeah, I, was, nice. I, I, I wanted to be dem I actually want it to be destroyed, which sounds like well, that's crazy. But... It's it that I think adds to the poignancy of it, and it's uh, I'll tell you, Maria, just tell. Can I tell everyone what the words of this song are? Because I think yes, that's, I was um, going to read yeah. those out, but I think it's a good idea if you do. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, I'm not reading all of them. Important. I'm just I'm, I'm paraphrasing a bit wrongly. So and uh, and uh, and I'm not reading all of them, but just to give people the idea of the words, they, it says this is a little bit wrong, but it's close. Where is the little street? Where is the house? Where is the maiden who I love? 
here is the little here is the little street here is the house here is the maiden who i love and it repeats that with different things about where is the brook and where is this and that a mill and then it says once inside the house the pain is great all that remains is a dream no more little street no more little house no more maiden whom i love so it's about thinking of somewhere going back in your mind and then realizing it doesn't exist so it really does need it uh, the, the 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 ephemeral nature of it is part of it and yeah. and i like the idea of it being actually not just painted over but smashed down um which is why, by the way, I, when it's, there's actually paint splats all over the floor because I didn't need to put down drop sheets because the whole thing is going. I like the yeah. idea of that. And when we, this film we're doing, we want to actually film it being destroyed. But I wanted people to see it before it's destroyed. Yeah. Well, they might. You know what? I'm very hopeful. The numbers weren't too bad today. They weren't oh, going please. up. please, wouldn't it be good? Wouldn't it be good? It would be so I mean, good. Look, I just really yeah, yeah. want to see it. But now that you said that about the paint so. on the floor, I think that's fantastic. I would love to see that as well because when do you ever see that? I mean, sometimes, look, sometimes so right. you do. No, but no, Maria, that's a, what I think. It's a student's thing, you know. <laughs> Not that's in one of those exactly fancy galleries. Thinking. That's what I said. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I'm sure it exists. Obviously, everything, everyone's yeah. done everything and we don't really yeah. care. But, yeah. but it's... It's, it was, you know, it was, it's so extraordinary to be, I've got paint and liquid on my brush and I can flick my brush to get the water off and it, it's done a spray on the floor. Yeah. No problem. Something I just dropped a big blob of red paint. No problem. Um, <laughs> it, it's extraordinary. Well, it's, it's like also a really, it's like it's, a studio and it's yeah. totally real. And it also shows you it, it's unlike, unlike what, yes, a studio like where we are now, there is, um, you know, I'm just going to click off again so that I'm going around to show you again. You know, there's paint on the wall. There's, you know, you can have it in a, in a bit of a mess like this because it's a working space. But yeah. in, um, in the museum, all of these sorts of things, any of these paintings when they're finished, um, some of them are framed, but others are not. But whatever they are, they're presented nicely. They're hung on a white wall. We don't see the messy, filthy thing where they actually came from. Um, yeah. and, and in this uh, <laughs> exhibition, we see where they came from because where yeah. they came from is what it is. Yeah, well, that's right. That's, and also, I noticed in one of the videos, because if people don't know, if you go to Wendy's page on Instagram, there's a lot of process videos, which is really very interesting. And what I saw at the beginning of those videos was this long scroll that you had done of, were yes. they paintings? Was that when you were away? Yes, or was Yes, and that's what I wish I could show you right now, but that's in the Jewish Museum. I did a very long, it's a long, beautiful Chinese scroll. These, these are Chinese um, things for, uh, for calligraphy and um, paintings and various long paintings, but particularly for calligraphy, they're fantastic. Anyway, I actually did it as like a journey scroll on this Chinese, long Chinese roll. Uh, and I did do a lot of that while I was away. There's also a folding book. Um, which is a, like a visual diary of all the places we went and how I felt about it. And I used those as a starting point, as reference for what I was yeah. actually going to, to paint. Well, I've done a lot of a folding lot. books. Sorry? Yeah. I've done a lot of folding books. I just wondered there's nothing really. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah mean, I know. I love those. But also it, it's, that's interesting because it makes no, it less daunting, I think. Like to do a mural like that would be less daunting if you've done like quite a few sketches on yes. plein air or whatever or afterwards in the hotel or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's so immediate and then you can draw from that afterwards. I mean, you know, I've that's heard so right. many that's artists right. talk about that. Yes, because it's like when you went to this place, it could be anywhere, it doesn't have to be something as dramatic as that. When you went to this place, what was it that really struck me? What did I feel about it? What, did, what, what is the memory I'm going to carry away from this experience? And then how would I draw that? You know, uh, and, and then piecing those together in some kind of a narrative. The other question that you asked me when we're talking about um, some parts being like a drawing and some being like a painting, um, I was going to say, I've already forgotten. <laughs> I'm so busy, I'm going there. <laughs> well, I'm going to look up. While you think of that, oh, I'll look up. What was I going to say? 
Oh, yes, uh, sorry. I'll think of it. It doesn't right. matter. Okay. Oh, I could go back, oh, but who cares? What were you going to say? Here. Sorry, what, I'm, I'm talking over the top of you. Sorry. Yeah, How many hours of painting in this? Do you ever sleep, Wendy? <laughs> <You're so> <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I, what was a day I, like? I, uh, well, what happened, I would get there at 9.30 um, and I would leave at 5 um, and I would pretty much paint all day, have lunch about, you know, 1.30 or something, eating a sandwich, sitting, looking at it. Um, sometimes, you know, and I was being filmed and and uh, occasionally um, when we weren't in severe lockdown, uh, you know, if someone would, that was, someone would come and chat with me or interview me for something. So, um, you know, I was, I had other other sort of things happening at the same time but I was pretty much painting for for six days I've just got a few little touches to do a few little things that need adjustment not much and I also want to write a bit of text into it I want to write in with I think a, a really heavy black pencil and I I don't want it to be text heavy it is it is a oh, I know what I was going to say it is a um it's picture based, of course, it's not text, but just to explain where some of these places are and just to say, and then we went to this town and this happened there or, you know, bits and pieces like that. There's a nice sort of fun thing in that there's a drawing of my cousin Ruth and I eating, are eating cake in a cafe that's attached to a synagogue, just to say we are eating cake in this cafe, whatever, you know, little things like yeah. that. But what yeah. I was going to say was, Besides the challenge of um, having quite dense areas and then having drawing bits, the other thing I was trying to do was to work out how one scene kind of morphs or fades into the next. It's like mm. if you're making a film, do you cut this abruptly? We're in the studio, gone, now we're at the beach or somewhere. Or do we have something that leads us in? And I wanted most scenes to kind of slowly mould or meld, meld, into the next yeah. scene so that you're led yeah. through to the next thing and the next thing. Mm. Yeah, because it gives a great flow on effect, yeah. It's a got, and it sort of gives it a bit of a dreamy quality as well, I think. Yes. Um, it's absolutely That's great. beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. A um, dream is good because it's linking with that, yes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to just have a look if there are any more questions. There do, oh, does the mural, yes, the mural does have a name. It's Vuiz dos Gessle, which is where is the little street. Yeah, um, and I'm going to be playing a song yeah. at the end. Um, uh, well, uh, Mark is saying, Artie Mark, I uh, couldn't be sure, okay. Artie Mark, I couldn't share it for some reason, sorry. It basically says, it, um, how does it feel that no one will see it in person if lockdown continues? Like for you, I suppose you've expressed that looking. already. Look extremely disappointing. People say, "Oh, you got a good attitude." No, I'm very disappointed. But I also, and I'm not so philosophical. We're all disappointed by things, but you know, there's just, it's just how it is at this time, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the main yeah, thing is yeah. that although I'm I'm disappointed because I want people to see it, I'm delighted, Maria, that we're having this conversation. But I'm also really grateful that it's being photographed and and filmed because. Yeah. If it yes, it will only eventually it would only be a memory anyway, but. I want pictures of it. Yeah, definitely. So that's cool. And so I presume when that's ready, you will be advertising that on your page and everything. I'll, I'll share I that will. Well. I, I, will. Yeah. I will do that. I will do that, yes. Yeah. You've got no idea when that will happen? I suppose you can't. Yeah. Um, you, it depends on the filmmaker. Don't know because we don't know. Well, see, what's supposed to happen now is that when I finished it, whenever is possible, um, I will go in there with the curator, Rosalind, and we will discuss, there are some very, they're perfectly shaped for what I want, long, narrow display cases, vitrines that are going down the middle of this room, which is a rectangular room where it is. And that's going to have some of the studies for it that we were discussing, but also uh -huh. some family memorabilia, including things like, this is amazing. My father died in 2002. I wasn't, I couldn't bring, even though that's ages ago, I couldn't bring myself to open an entire suitcase of his diaries that went back to when he was about, he was 12. And he, he always, he was a writer. He always wanted to be a writer. So he's writing about how he feels and he's like, it's so incredible to read and um, oh, I'm going to have, have one of those. That must have been an unbelievable open. experience for you. I mean, I can understand why it was so hard to oh. read them. 
It was. Well, there's, I, the, the, the day I was, I, I read the piece about the day I was born and he says, he describes because they, you know, how much he wanted me and all of that. And he says, Wendy, if in the future you read this, I want you to know, you know, and I was, you know, oh, I mean, how gosh. moving is that? How wow. moving is that? And how lucky I am to have that. What a gift. Yeah. I saw the uh, you posted the photo of the suitcase with the books in it, mm. and I thought, mm. yes. what a treasure. But that must have been what a suitcase treasure. that just was in your house and was always there and just beckoning for you to go and open it and read it. Absolutely. I knew I had to yeah. do it, but I just couldn't bring myself. And then I also knew I absolutely, if I'm not, I have to do it. If I'm going to paint this thing, I have to do it. So... Um, yeah. I, I, you know, went, got a box of tissues, sat in the front room with a, with a, uh, with a sketchbook to write notes from it. And, um, you know, I just went through all of them and I went back in time. What was actually, this is all digressing from this mural, but what was really interesting was my father, I was extremely close to him and he was a wonderful, gentle, wise man who I could tell him anything. We we're very close, but he always gave me really great when I was young, you know, not non-judgmental, really great advice. But what was interesting is as I read back in time, it started to go to the point where I could give him advice and say, no, don't do that. Stop. You know, I'm going back to when he was 20 or something. And no, you, you know, don't think like that. You know, it was just, it was okay. so interesting to, to sort of, sort of meet your parents when yeah. they were so young. Oh, isn't that strange? Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame you couldn't talk to him about it, you know. I know anyway. that's the worst thing because he would be so he would be he'd also be shocked that I could go there that this place which was kind of a legendary place. I mean the fact that we can now we can be sitting on a bus um, doing a, a Google Street View, walking down a place on the other side of the world. You know, I mean the fact yeah. that we can do things like that is yeah. is so extraordinary. Yeah. And and when we compare that to that family photograph I just showed you when they left the Ukraine round round 1900, um, mm. just after, it's like you've just come to you've gone from one planet to another planet. You'll know you'll never go back. It's a it's a it's all gone. It's certainly not yeah. like let's have a look and let's do what we're doing now. You and I talking now. I mean we're both in yeah. the same city, but you could be in another country and we could still do this. It's you no, know it's know. all of this has changed a lot of what this mural is about, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And do you find that um, when your father did he? I mean, you were saying your mother's not Jewish, but your father was. Yeah. was did he pass on much cultural Jewish culture to you? Uh, well, I'm not religious at all in any way, um, but it's a more of an ancestral identity way, which I was always I was always conscious of. Yeah, it's a very strong culture, isn't it? It's it's a wonderful. Yes. I mean, it's very yes. it's a very um, I don't know. For me, I find it very. Uh, I mean, I'm not Jewish, but uh, very uh, appealing. You know. I don't well, know yes. I mean, of... there's some there are some there are some good things about it. <laughs> So I think sense of community as well, sense of community and family yeah. is quite important as well. Yes, yeah. yes, that's true. Um, now there's also, now there's another question here from Mary. Uh, sorry if you've already covered this, but are you doing any other painting inspired by your ancestry or have you already done that? Um, there was a painting that I did called Unfinished Business, uh, which is at the beginning of this um, exhibition we're talking about, Where is a Little Street, where I'm actually wearing this, which is what I'm wearing here, which is this. I'm showing you my lovely dirty jumper with um, musical notes all over it. And I'm crouching around drawing something. And, and amongst it is, amongst all the things that I'm drawing, is um, an image of this same family again and uh, where they were in London and a plate that belonged to my great-grandmother, Rachel. So um, I did that, but then also th I had a, a huge exhibition which had a mural, large mural compo component, a six-metre-high mural in Mossman Art Gallery in Sydney, which was called Ghosts. And that wasn't all about this family, but there was some work that was. So, yeah. you know, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's certainly something that will probably come back into my work in some way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Wendy, for having us in your studio. And um, fingers crossed for the lockdown. Get thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you so um, much, Maria. 
Hope to catch up thank soon. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. That was, oh, how wonderful. Wendy, is. I really, really hope that the um, exhibition lockdown ends and that the exhibition uh, goes ahead, the museum opens, because I'm going to be the first person through the door. Um, now, as promised, I will um, now just end up, uh, end by playing the video that Wendy gave me of um, Faye Sussman singing the song Vuis dos Gesele. And um, Wendy did sort of say a few lines from that song. I'll just read a few lines out just so that you, it's fresh in your mind as to what this is translated into English. Of course, it's Yiddish what she is singing. Where is the little street? Where is the house? Where is the girl whom I love? There is the little street. There is the house. There is the girl whom I love. Once inside the house, my pain is great. All that now remains is a dream. No more little street, no more house, no more girl whom I love. love, love, love. 